If you're in a healthy relationship with a man, can you stitch this video and talk about it? I know I'm super late to this. I've had this in my favorite videos for like weeks and weeks, but I really wanted to ruminate on it a bit. I am married to the love of my life. Um, I'm going to give you a quick shock factor example. We met in January, started dating in February, got engaged in April, and got married in June. Then we got pregnant four months later. Now we have a 17-month-old boy, and I am ha over halfway through my second pregnancy. I will be straight up and say I don't think that moving fast is healthy or safe for a lot of people but in our scenario it was divine it was the only way that it could have gone and should have gone and it's been a dream just for our context we are believers we're Christians and when we were dating we were kind of looking for a marriage partner rather than just trying to get to know people or have fun so it was quite intentional from the start, and both he and I had had previous relationships. Um, but when we met each other, there was something different right from the start. We were drawn to each other in such an incredible way. Our previous experiences had shown us, you know, what we needed and what we didn't need. And I just, something clicked with him the second I first saw him. My family is fairly traditional, and so... He decided to go to them, who he actually had known longer than he knew me, and just kind of ask for his blessing in pursuing me. Like, he went to my dad and asked, hey, I'm really interested in pursuing your daughter. Like, do I have your blessing to do so? And he also got that from my mom as well. On our first real date, when we were together, quote unquote, um, we spent a couple of hours really just digging into deep topics, like we talked about some of our past mistakes, some of our regrets, we talked about our plan for the, and hopes for the future, um, whether or not we wanted kids one day. I mean, we went deep immediately, like we were not wasting any time. During our dating experience, we both were abstinent until our wedding day. So um, that is just how we proceeded and doing so really poured a lot of energy into other areas such as communication and really getting to know the nitty gritty of this person. We were practically inseparable. I mean, beside the very first week, we saw each other every single day, even if it was for only a few minutes. We really talked through as much as you could possibly imagine whatever came to us in our time where we were not married, because there are some things you can't even realize or think of until you're married, but we talked through everything that was within reach. And even though I know it's common for abstinent couples to avoid the topic of sex, we were talking about that too, and really talking about expectations, hopes, concerns, fears, and all the above so that we could go into marriage fully equipped to take on that battle as well. Having a healthy relationship, it requires two people who are willing to be humble and willing to lay down their immediate knee-jerk emotional responses in order to care more about their partner's feelings, and that goes on both sides. It takes me, the more communicative person in the relationship, to lay down my need for him to know things without me saying them. I have to ask him if I need something and let him learn me so that in the future, he then doesn't need to be told anymore. But doing that requires humility. And it also requires the ability to have emotional intelligence about your own feelings. Because I feel like a lot of us run into, like we feel such intense things, but we can't quite find the root exactly. We can't find it in the moment. And that is so important to do. One of the best things you can do is when you're feeling hurt in a moment, stop before you say anything and really think on it. Think, what is the reason why that hurt me? Is that something that I need to communicate with him so he can adapt accordingly? Or is it something about myself and realizing that I need to work on? And then in that moment, as soon as you're ready, you share that with them openly and vulnerably. 
instead of pointing out their flaw or the issue at hand, you say, right now I'm really struggling with what just happened a few moments ago, and I think this is a why. So basically we've just built our, our marriage on constant and thorough communication and doing so in a way that is well received. Not just talking more, but talking more in a way that can be res absorbed and that is respectful to your partner. On the other end, when you are the person who did something to bother someone and they're coming to you, you have to resist that initial urge to be defensive, upset, to feel like they're overreacting. Instead, you have to relax and really hear them, listen to them, and you can acknowledge if there's a wrong that you're aware of right away. And otherwise, you talk through it. You reason through maybe why you did or said a certain thing in a way that is not charged or directed in any way. And you just kind of let them into your mind. I think a lot of people struggle in relationships because they don't even thoroughly understand their own minds and hearts. So to be able to stop and explain that before they hurt somebody is almost impossible for a lot of people. That, I believe, is why so many marriages struggle, especially in that first year as they're adapting to each other. Thankfully, in our case, since we did so much work before meeting each other to be a very good partner, a receptive and caring partner, we didn't have that miserable first year. In fact, it was practically pure bliss. Like, it was perfect. We've been together a few years now, and the last year or two, where we've faced more struggles and things as such, we still are able to communicate in a way that is so helpful and have never intentionally hurt one another, not once. Specific to my husband, me going through pregnancy, birth, and postpartum the first time was extremely rough. I could hardly lift a finger at home. I couldn't even be touched or pecked for six weeks straight in my early trimester of pregnancy because I was so sick. I was repelled by affection and repelled by the smell of my husband, which was fine and dandy before, but when I was pregnant, it was not for some reason. Through that time, he was giving 90% and I was giving 10%, but I was giving 100% of what I had and he was giving 100% of what he had. Together, we got through that season without ever lashing out at one another without ever hurting each other intentionally. And coming through a season like that together, it really binds you with the person and realizing, wow, you are amazing. You are selfless, caring, and a servant, a servant's heart, you know, which is something that you really want in a partner. And of course, in a healthy relationship, when there's a time where one partner is unable to give so much, then when they're capable of giving again, they feel a strong, compelling desire to do so because they're so appreciative of that partner sticking through the hard times and not making them feel guilty and not making them feel unappreciated for what they are doing. I would say that for us, our faith in God is a huge, in fact, the huge contributor to how we're capable of having such a healthy and blessed relationship. But I also understand that a lot of these are tangible skills that anyone can learn and develop and apply. But ultimately, the spirit of unconditional love, in my opinion, comes from God. So there's only one way to really get that flowing source. Humans are not naturally like that. No human naturally in their human nature is going to be completely unconditional. Anyway, just a couple tips for a happy, blessed relationship. Spend each day living in gratitude rather than trying to weigh someone's mistakes or keep a tally of their wrongs. Push through and go out of your way to bless your partner. Even when you're a little bit busy or a little bit tired, still try to make that happen so that you can remind them how special they are to you, even into marriage, especially into marriage. Talk about things as soon as you're able to rather than letting it fester, even if they're really small. Just get used to him understanding your brain and you understanding his brain because then down the line, you'll have a lot less issues. And find your source of unconditional love.